So I was just going for a bit of a walk in a, not a new state forest, but one I haven't really hunted. Chasing a, um, chasing red deer this year. So I'm just going to drop my game camera off. Haven't found anything real, real fresh. Um, just come across an old rub tree. Well, an old little patch with a few rub trees around. Rub tree in there. Now it's not that tall for a, a red deer. But I have found a big print in the bottom of it. And it's fresh too. So that's the, the best sign I've found. And I think there's a bit of a walkway across here as well. So I think I might put my camera up on one of these trees and just see what comes past and I'll come back later in the week to check it out. Hopefully there's um, some more signs, but that big footprint seems to um, allude that there's something around. Okay. Well, it might be a bit of a good area. It's definitely last year's. Um, so something has been in and around here. Just hope something passes by on the camera. No takers. I just want to talk briefly about hunters helping hunters. I got a mate coming out here on the weekend and I offered um, to set up his game cameras for him um, in a spot that he wanted. So um, he's given me this cracker of a spot. It's probably the most rub trees I've ever seen. Um, and it's early January, but they've already started rubbing. Um, there's a fresh tree there. Um, so they're probably to the end of their velvet. Um, but there's definitely big animal in here, uh, at least one stag, got to be at least one. This whole area is littered with rub trees. Um, but yeah, good luck to you Toby. I hope you get some good photos so you can send back through to me. Okay, so we have one rub tree, two rub tree, three rub tree, four rub tree, Very promising out of here. Smell too big on here. Right 
across the body started rubbing, started touching these other creases all around the bottoms. There's just trees everywhere here that's smashed up. Must be smart though, because it was all old stuff too. rubs I've seen anywhere. Just finished walking that gully. It's a really nice gully. Just come down the private here. I'm just gonna have a quick look. It's a nice view over the top here. Um, so I've just dropped that camera off right at the top where I saw all those rub trees from my mate. Um, and hopefully you can see something coming through because there's a shitload of sign in that valley. Um, we didn't see much scat, but heaps of game trails, heaps of rub trees. Um, so that was the main objective of this afternoon, to get get the camera in place. Um, so I'm just going to head back to the car and shoot off to the spot I usually stop at. Nice easy camp. There's a couple big scrapes and that I want to check out as well up that way. So get into camp, go for a quick look and then um, thanks for dinner and have a rest for tomorrow. So trees down, and that's what we have to reverse up. You see the car at the moment. It's pretty steep. Got no turn around here, so we're gonna have to reverse up this first bit until we can find a bit flat enough to reverse. So I have to turn around. You know, see what happens. So it's just quarter to six. Probably should have already wanted to be out by now. Maybe about 15 minutes earlier. Um, it was quite dark, but yeah, it's just brightened up a bit now. You can see it looks like it's raining over in that direction. But, uh, and that's where I'm heading. Um, the drizzle's okay, so it's good for hunting when it's a little bit wet, a bit quieter. Um, but if it's pissing down, then it's going to be annoying. Um, I'm just going to drop into this big gully here and make my way over to where I usually hunt through the pines. I know this gully's got some sign in it usually as well. It's a bit of a transit um, from one side of the private all the way across to the private on the other side over there. Let's sort of see it. Right up there. Um, 
So yeah, I'm just going to check out a few spots um, I know of and see what's moving through them. Um, and maybe put another game camera up in here to help with all these trees down. Um, and how hard it is to access. And what I've seen here before, it seems like it's going to be a, a really good spot for the rut. Lots of protection, not many people coming in and out. Um, many access routes, access to pine, access to natives, lots of water at the bottom. So I know if I was a deer, that's where I'd be hiding this rut. first half hour of my morning, I literally dropped into the gully, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, slowly making my way down to the, to the bottom, about halfway down, um, I first saw a doe um, by itself, uh, hadn't noticed me, so I spent a couple minutes just watching her, I was still two, 300 metres, oh, close to 300 metres out through a lot of vegetation. So I just watched her um, at this time of year, I always um, like to check if they got a fawn with them. Um, and sure enough, she did have a fawn with her. Um, so then I just sat and observed them for a little bit. Um, a couple times I had both um, the fawn or, or and or the doe in my crosshairs. Um, but I did shoot one just before Christmas, so the freezer is sufficient at this stage, so there's no need to go shooting everything up, especially if it does have a fawn like, um, we sort of want, although they are a pest, if you shoot absolutely everything, there's going to be nothing left, so, um, I don't know, people might think otherwise on that and say they are a pest, so everything should be shot. Um, but I'd like to hear from what you guys think um, in that situation. 
Um, Because in this scrub, I knew I wasn't going to get the fawn if I took the doe. Um, And taking a fawn for meat when I'm already got a sufficient freezer doesn't really make sense either. So um, that was my decision on that. Um, It's good just to sit and watch. Actually, ended up they sort of come up over this or around the bottom of this ridge, and I sort of come up over the top of the ridge just behind me, and I ended up within. 30 metres, popped up over a log and um, the doe's head popped straight up, looked at me and, and off they went. Um, so I didn't go after them, obviously you just headed up that gully which I am headed up eventually. Um, but I'm sitting on this nice open spot. Lots of green grass down the bottom and hopefully you can get something else moving up. Nice velvet stag would be beautiful right now. Um, We'll see what happens. little pine section with these little openings and clearings all through it and not only is the roads around it changed you can't even get in here because all the pines have come down and the the whole area has changed there's pines down in clearings that you used to be able to walk through or um, or look through you can see greater distances there's water everywhere. This place must have been flooded uh, with the big storms recently. Um, there's one section that's just like a swamp. So um, it's amazing how these places change. Now there's still sign about. Um, there's still shit in the usual signs. Um, one, of the, one of the beds I usually check out hasn't been touched. Um, I did find this little spikers casty but now it's been eaten away and chewed up but a little spiker it may have been the one that I had on my camera from last year that was in this area um, but yeah it's amazing how much these places change um, at times I'm looking around going where am I and I've been here thousands of times I'm just sitting on a little opening now I'm gonna work my way back to where I saw those deer this morning back up towards the car and then we might check out another spot that's the whole point of this trip to scout and see what's about what's moving uh, where they're active um, or in the lead up to the right there's a few trotters around with all this rain fresh plants fresh diggings and shot a big water in the action. 